Greetings, hi, the war owl greets you, and I've got a special guest today. Joining me here is a professional network engineer, a brilliant mind, who also happens to be my brother. Uh, he goes by Titanium, and some of you diehard war owl fans might remember him from the How to Beat the Insane AI StarCraft II videos. He spends a lot of his free time exploiting video games, uh, screwing around with them just to screw with people, uh, like playing EVE Online. And I brought him here as an expert to explain to you what is meant by server tick rate. Now, a lot of you have been curious about all the technical stuff with the servers, and I felt it'd be a good idea to get a professional in here to explain this to you. So here he is. Greetings, Titanium. Hello. So the big question is, what is meant by tick rate? What is tick rate? So when you have a game server and a client, they both have views of what's going on at the same time. And they're going to be a little bit different because in order for the client to figure out what the server is doing, the server has to send an update. And for the client to tell the server what's going on or what it's doing, the client has to send an update. So the tick rate is how fast they're updating each other. So if you don't send any information to the server for, let's say, 10 milliseconds, the server has no clue what you've done in that amount of time. And on the other side, if the server se if something happens on the server, let's say somebody shoots somebody or somebody moves or ducks, then the client has no clue what's happened until it receives an update. So the tick rate is just how fast you're getting those updates. And the faster it is, the more accurate your view of what's going on in the server, and the better the view the server has of what you're doing on your client. Okay, so what do people mean when they say 64 tick? And, and how is that different from 128 tick? So the 64 tick server, 64 times a second, you're going to be getting an update of everything that you should be getting from the server. It'll have all the, every other player near you, what they're doing, and where they are. And that'll happen 64 times a second. With 128 tick, you get that information 128 times per second. So that's pretty straightforward. It's just how fast the server updates. Yeah, it's pretty simple. So generally, servers with more people playing on them have lower tick rates. And servers with less people playing on them have higher tick rates. Why is that? Because, I mean, let's say you have 500 to 1,000 bytes in every packet. If you're sending 64 of them, you're already going to be sending more than a dial-up user could handle and you're going to use up their bandwidth. If you're sending even more than that, like let's say you have a 32-man server and you have 100 tick, that's 3,000 updates per second. So are limitations because of the client side? Client side meaning people's personal computers? No, not at all. It's the server side. Because the server has to send the server state to every single person that many times per second, and that uses up a lot of bandwidth. So do 128 tick servers have twice the cost of 64 tick servers? Uh, it's going to use twice as much bandwidth, and it'll probably use about twice as much resources as far as CPU, but the memory should be the same. I mean, twice as much dollar amount for Valve. Yeah, probably close to twice as much. You could probably have half as many servers running on a given computer. So here's my question. From a player's perspective, does tick rate actually matter? So if you use the default rates, it's not going to make any difference because of all the lag compensation. Essentially, when you're playing the game, you're looking at a view of the server from 100 milliseconds ago. So that's about 100 tick, or that's about 10 tick, and below that it would start mattering if you had no loss. So if you had, let's say you have a server and it's sending updates to the client. The clients, they can't show you what's happening on the server because that doesn't match with what you're doing with your mouse and keyboard because it happened, let's say, 100 milliseconds ago. So what they do is you update... Like, it follows what you're doing normally, but you're actually looking at what happens on the server from 100 milliseconds ago. And then you send the updates back to the server, and it calculates when it thinks that you did those, like when it thinks you shot. And then it rolls back the time on the server, figures out if you were pointing at something at that time, and then does whatever command you sent. So if you shoot somebody, it actually it, it makes time go backwards and it figures out what you were actually pointing at on your screen when you thought you clicked on somebody's face. Okay, so you're saying some of the calculations are done client-side. So let's say uh, you have a situation where um, you have strafed behind cover, but you still die. Um, is that something that can happen with the CSGO netcode? Yeah, it's completely possible. Because what happens is you're standing there, and he sees you standing there on his screen. 
and then let's say you duck for cover. He's not going to know that you duck for cover for up to maybe 100 to 200 milliseconds, which is, it's not that long, but it's long enough to duck behind cover. So what will happen is you'll be behind cover. He'll shoot you, because on his screen, he sees you standing out there like a tart. And he'll shoot you in the face. On his screen, you'll die. He'll send that to the server. The server will go back, look 100 milliseconds ago, figure out that, yes, he was pointing at your face, and he shot you. And then he'll go to you and tell you that you're dead, even though on your screen you're standing behind the wall. High-level players have been reporting lots of problems with the 64-tick servers. Um, my question to you is, does 128-tick actually make a difference? Yeah, if you mess with your rates, it'll make a huge difference. Because you, you won't have cases where you walk behind a wall and somebody shoots you and you'll have a much more accurate view of what's going on because it's actually going to be updating where everyone is more often. I mean, 64 tick is about the refresh rate of a cheap monitor. And if you're spending a few thousand dollars on a computer, you're probably going to have a 120 hertz monitor. You'll be able to have 300 frames per second constantly, even when there's 20 people on your screen. And if you're being limited by 64 updates per second, that'll be annoying. Counter-Strike Global Offensive has an in-game matchmaking system done by Valve. Um, a lot of their servers are done 64 tick. A lot of players have complained about this. Do you think it would be prudent to have the higher level servers in there, like the top rank in matchmaking, um, play on the 128 tick and everybody else play on the 64 tick? Yeah, I don't think that would be very helpful because then you kind of have two different leagues. I mean, you probably have to make it something where you could sign up for either of them and have two totally separate groups of people, like have a professional and an amateur league. But that wouldn't be any fun because then there's no chance of moving from the amateur to the professional because it's a whole different game. Oh, so 128 tick is such a big difference that it's a completely different game. Yeah, because in one you're just going to you're gonna spray it and pray, and the other one you're actually going to try and aim for the person while they're moving. So should all servers be 128 tick? Yeah, assuming you want it to be competitive. If you just want to have fun and go spray at people and hope they die. So Call of Duty style, so you think 64 tick's fine for like the lower level noob casual players? Yeah, 64 tick is fine for most people, but if you want to, I mean, if you want to have people that are professionals and they spend a lot of money on their computers to make sure that they're better than the other people's, and you want to actually make skill count, like that extra 1% of skill that professionals have, it'll actually matter. And it won't just be a bunch of people that are so good and then they're all equal. So you're blue shelling people. Blue shelling. I love that term. I love that video game reference. Um, so, in terms of what we're talking about, how does this interp thing factor into it? Yeah, so CL interp, what it does is it sets how far back behind the server you're going to be looking on your client. So, the most important thing is that when you move your mouse, you want the screen to move. You don't want to move your mouse to the left and then 100 milliseconds later you see the screen start to move because it'll just drive you insane. So that interp is basically, it's the amount of time behind the server that you're going to be looking at it. So that, like, let's say you drop a packet. You don't want to just not know what happened. If you have CL interp being maybe three packets worth of time, um, you'll still see exactly the same thing as you would normally because it'll just figure out what might have happened during that time. Ah, so you could actually be shooting at something that isn't actually there. Yeah, it could be a few feet behind them where they'd actually be on the server at that time. So it sounds like this will be a limiter to skill. It sounds like this is going to be a cap on the skill level. What about people who can perfectly flick their mouse, like flick shooting, flick their mouse and hit a target perfectly and, and just like almost instantaneously? Yeah, if you can do that, then 120 tick probably isn't even enough. Because you're basically, there's a guy moving on your screen, and picture he's going like in a slideshow, where he moves maybe one foot every slide. And you're moving your mouse maybe 10 feet every time it updates. And you're trying to have your computer figure out exactly what point you clicked and make sure that that's pointing at his face. So it's going to look like a slideshow and you're going to not be able to even click on them. So I made a video where I rant about the server tick rates. Uh, have you seen that? Yeah, so it was the first thing that came up when I typed into Google on server tick rate. Was what I said actually correct? Yeah, it was mostly correct. Mostly correct? Oh, that inspires me with confidence. There's a couple things that were ambiguous, but other than that it was fine. 
So thank you very much for coming on here and answering some questions. Hopefully folks learned something about the whole server tick rate and everything. I know a lot of people have been asking questions about that, so I thought it was great to bring in a professional network engineer, someone like you who's, who's brilliant and knows this stuff in and out to talk about it. So uh, thanks again, and before you go, is there anything else you would like to talk about? I have to be careful because I know you, um, you like to talk a lot about things that most people don't understand. So is there anything else you'd like to talk about? So back in my day, back in my day, back in my day, we had analog ports on our graphics cards. So there was no forward error correction. There was no encryption. It was just an analog, no, three of them, one per color channel, coming out of our computer, hooked up to a, a series of magnets. And these magnets would be deflecting electrons coming out of a particle accelerator, with each with an energy of 300 electron volts. And those would be shot at a shadow mass that would leave a shadow except for one spot on three different locations, depending on which particle accelerator the electrons were coming out of. And this would convert the energy of the electrons into visible light, which we would see on our screen. And the whole time, when the electrons were colliding with this, we would be generating x-rays and shooting them straight at our faces, and we were better for it. When you turned on the monitor, it would have it would have energy stored in a bank of capacitors and it would discharge this with an alternating magnetic field through a wire going around the screen that would slowly remove any residual magnetic fields on it to make sure that the picture was clear and it would make a loud noise and anything around it that could be affected by electromagnetic waves would be scrambled like any screen around it would flicker and it was amazing and we were better for it. 